Good morning everyone and welcome to Craft Eccentricity and it's our geranium tutorial today and I was supposed to show you some other things but I'm telling you I got a load of stuff and got carried away in all sorts of directions yesterday that today is just the geranium tutorial and I will show you a little bit of a haul um, at the end of it and to be honest I felt a little bit tired yesterday I was just going through everything so anyway let's make this a nice easy tutorial so first of all I'm going to be using my silicone mats these are project mats that you can get from AliExpress they're really really cheap and of course we're going to use the geranium dye you can see it's covered in all bits of fluff at the moment because I've had it on and off and and I've been playing with it so anyway right we're going to be using this and we're going to take advantage of the fact that I hand drew all of those lines into that die now they will emboss beautifully and that's what we're going to take advantage of we're going to take advantage of the embossing so I'm going to be using regular Walmart cardstock which is about five dollars and 99 cents for I think it's 150 sheets so that's what we're going to be using and I've got a scrap of yellow foam here which I believe is either two mil I'm going to say it's two mils thick and this one is from Alina Craft but it's regular kind of craft foam so I reckon you can get this at Walmart too and I'm going to die cut my Walmart paper and I'm going to die cut my foam and I'm going to be straight back. Okay, so I've done that and I've also grabbed my inks and I'm going to go with Peel Paint, Mowed Lawn and Barn Door. And these are regular distress inks and the reason for that is because... Um, oxide is too opaque for what I want to do you can use oxide if you want to but I'm choosing regular distress ink and I've got my blending tools and what have you and I've decided I'm going to go with three leaves because I love odd numbers and when I go and die cut the flowers um, I'll either do three or five of those so here are my leaves and if I hold one up you can see all that gorgeous embossed detail now it doesn't matter what you do with these if you lay ink down onto these you're going to find that it will saturate right down into that embossing now you may like that or you may like to have your embossing a bit more pronounced which is what we're going to do which is why I die cut one in that yellow foam I just showed you and it will emboss through on both sides now what you need to do is you need to match it up so that you've got it the correct way down so that when you're laying this down it's going to fit and what we're going to do is turn this into a stamp so that needs to be this way around I put a couple of pieces of double sided adhesive on my stamp block and I hope it's going to cover that area there we go and I'm just going to stick that down so that it now matches face to face the die cut can you see that and if it's a little bit wibbly or a little bit out because of course foam does stretch it really really doesn't matter so first of all I'm going to go in with peel paint because this is a slightly duller shade which is going to allow this one the mode lawn to show up a lot better now you don't have to be perfect with this and I am going to pick it up to show you exactly what I mean by putting the ink down you can still see the embossing, but it's just not as pronounced. Let's see if we can get close up. See that? So that's what that piece of foam is going to do for us. And it's going to make it look really creative and arty. And it will do it really, really quick. So I'm just going to pause. Whoops, she says creasing that one. Well, I get the rest of the ink down on here. In fact, I think I need to re-ink that pad. I've had it for years right so I'm going to finish doing these and I'll be straight back okay so I put my um, peeled paint distress ink on there and you can see it's not perfect it's a bit blotchy and I have put a crease in that one but I'm not going to worry about it so blotchy blotchy and now we're going to get 
our foam stamp that we've created using that die with that lovely embossing and we're going to grab the mowed lawn and I'm just going to pop that down all over the surface so I'm quite happy with that and I'm not going to stamp it down I'm actually going to pick up my leaf and I'm going to position it on there and just rub it down I hope I'm not going all blurred and hopefully when we pick it up you'll see the magic <laughs> everybody waiting with bated breath there you go so now you've got more of a realistic leaf and what you can do is you can get your ink blending tool which I just put down here <laughs> I couldn't find it for a minute and you can go onto the edge with a little bit of mowed lawn just to take up any areas that you missed and we're not seeking perfection but you've just got a really really nice leaf there that was really really quick to do so that's looking a lot more realistic and if you wanted to go around with a little bit of aged mahogany you will find uh, geranium leaves have got that red band around them um, as well I mean I spend a lot of time in garden centres when I get out but um, you'll find that geranium leaves can come in all kinds of colours you get a dark green band you can get a creamy white band on them so you know just just uh, Google one and, and have a good look. And here I go again. So I'm going to place that on there. Just hold it down with your hands while you give it a good rub. And, of course, this piece of foam will just peel straight off your block as well as the, uh, the tape. And if you ever have any trouble with anything sticky, I recommend Goo Gone because that's what my hubby always gets me and sticks the bottle on my table. And there we go again. You've got that lovely realistic impression and then we're just going to ink blend those edges out so down again and you can do exactly the same thing if you wanted to with the flower petals because they too have got um, a great embossed detail on them but uh, I'm just going to go in with barn door to colour those because I do like really, really dark red geraniums. Have you ever noticed in the garden centre, the darker the red, the more expensive they are? So I usually buy them and take loads of cuttings. And there's your other one. So you've got gorgeous patterned leaves there. And as I've just said, you know, this is humidity. Look at this sticking my block down on the table. We're going to go into the mowed lawn going to get quite a bit on here and we're just going to take off those those paler edges and it gives a nice edge on the leaf at the same time so that what you end up with hopefully and I hope this was a good tip for you is something that looks a lot more realistic so if I hold that up now I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. Well, I have to say that, don't I? <laughs> so I'm just going to finish inking these and I'll be straight back. Okay, did those and here are the leaves. And you can see they just look quite realistic, I think. I think I can call them quite realistic. And geranium leaves are kind of like, they can be, I'm just using pens. In fact, if I can find my poke tool, that's even smaller. And they can kind of like grow off in all kinds of swirly twirly directions. So I'm just going to curl and then I can curl back again if I want to. And like I can curl that bit around, that bit forward. So that you're just creating, you know, something with a little bit of shape. It doesn't need to be too defined for something like this especially if it's uh, a card you're going to pop in the post and talking about cards and popping in the post I haven't even cut my card base yet so I haven't got a clue what kind of card base this is going to go on to this is how haphazard I am being right so there are two 
and going in for my third one and then I'm just going to run away and um, die cut the flowers because I like to work in odd numbers so I'm either going to cut three or I'm going to cut five but look at that how quick was that I mean seriously I know we're running 10 minutes on the clock but you've got to allow for my die cutting and inking down and what have you I mean at home I suppose you know with all your stuff around you you're going to be a lot faster than that and you can peel these off your block and just keep them um, you know give them a little wipe off so that they're not staining up your bag or the packaging whatever you keep your dies in and uh, just pop them in with your dies and every time you want to make a leaf you can just drag those out now one of the things I do intend to do is I want to do a collection of hand-drawn leaves because I just think it, it's just a really nice finishing touch to any flower now a few years ago for a seller on AliExpress I did design a full-size rose now I don't intend to do that again because they can be quite big and bulky they're nice to go on top of a gift box but if you're making cards so I'm going to try and do a miniature version of that and then I just want to do a full set of hand-drawn leaves so that any flowers or anything that you've got in your dye boxes there you're going to be able to do exactly the same thing because I'm going to ask Surprise Creation to ensure she puts a deep emboss into all of them right I'll stop wittering and I'll go and cut the flowers and I'll be right back Okay, so I decided to go with three and you get five petals and the flower centres um, look like little stars. Well, they are little stars and they're very similar to the centre of a geranium and the biggest one is your base and as you pop your leaves down, you've got your glue on there, um, your petals down, sorry, they will each go to the point on a star so it's going to be really easy for you to lay them up but anyway first of all we need to colour and I'm going in with barn door now because they're um, dimensional flowers I'm going to colour both sides so barn door is a lovely strong red and I'm sure my hands might be red the entire weekend and I'm just going to pounce each one but barn door does give a nice kind of geranium colour so if you've got that one in your stash it's lovely if you haven't you can if you're cutting in watercolour paper remember watercolour paper is a lot thicker um, then you can do that with watercolours so there's one I'll do another one and then I'm going to vanish and colour them all for you so flip it over pounce it again you don't really have to get your your hands in there too much because red is one of those awkward colors to kind of remove and there goes the phone so perfect timing and I'll color the other flowers okay those are all linked up and I'm pretty sure these are fluorescing on camera so I'm just going to pick a bunch up and let's see how close we can go there you go just a lovely geranium red so I really do like barn door for things like this and I will be taking a photograph that um, obviously appears at the beginning of the video so you'll be able to see any true colours now with these you need to curl them and once again I'm just using my poke tool I'm not using anything fancy you can use tweezers or whatever it is that you like to use and I'm just going to gently curl all these towards me uh, you can alter the shapes because sometimes geraniums can look, you know, a little bit frilly is the, uh, is the word I'd use. So just little bits of shape. You don't need to sort of like use a balling tool and, you know, seriously crush or bruise them or anything. Just some gentle curving. Right, I'll finish doing these and I will be straight back to you. Right, so I've gently curved them and I'm hoping that the camera is going to pick them up. I have dropped the camera so that you can have a closer look. But think about lace chips. That's what you need to think about. Just a gentle, gentle curve. That's all you need for a geranium. And like some are just sort of like bent in that direction. And then I've got some that are bent from the sides. 
just really, really gently wrap it around your poke tool or your pencil. And of course, they're going to go together like that. Right, so now to get them onto the centers, and I'm going to use glue dots and pray that the humidity is um, going to work for me. Because you can see, I'm, I'm still humid here. Look, see. <laughs> right, so poke tool again, and I'm just going to grab a glue dot and I'm going to pop it in the middle there. I'm hoping it's going to stay. Right. So there's number one. Very, very fiddly. I could use my Dollar Tree glue, but that would take much, much longer uh, to set up. And I'm really hoping that these work. These are really expensive, I think. And you can get an alternative from AliExpress, which is their, they call them balloon dots. Um, I will link those below. They're round and they're basically identical to uh, to these. So you can also have those. Right. In fact, I think I might have some on my table. Yeah. Here's a little bag. I think that's my balloon dots. Let me cut that open. We will have a look inside. And rub it. There you go. Can you see that? It's a glue dot. Now, obviously, it's bigger than the ones I've just put down there, but um, you can, with your poke tool, just kind of like roll those up into a ball. I'll show you. You just pull them, pull them in on themselves, see, and they get smaller until you get the size that you want, and then you can just pull it off. So that's like a quarter of the size of that one, and then you can just stick that down. So I think you get about 300 for a couple of bucks. So if I find a link, I'll put one below. Right, so I've got my uh, glue dots on there, and I'm going to move one here. And it really is as easy as point to point. Now, I'm going to move that up. Hopefully you can see it. And I'm going to get my finger back out of the glue. And we're going to go one and then on that point there I'm going to go two and then if you find you need to tuck under to get it level just go ahead and do that that's fine and we're going to go four remember you've got your tiny little stars here that go onto the top of there so if you make a mess, don't worry about it. Right, now, those five petals, let's see if we can get a close-up, I'm now attached onto there. Now, if you're doing a card that's going in the post, I would suggest you don't go really any more dimensional than that. But if you're going to put it in a box or something, then, you know, by all means, get a little bit carried away by pushing and curling your blooms a little bit more. But I'm going to put mine onto a card. So I think that is probably enough dimension for me. And that is the shape of a geranium. Right, so in the middle there, I'm going to use another glue dot. So this is how quickly I lose stuff. And I'm just peeling one off there. And I'm going to pop it down into the middle. Get my fingers out of the way. And then round here somewhere I've got my pickup tool. And we're just going to go straight down into the centre. So now your geranium has a centre. Now, if you don't like to have a different colour centre, you can just go straight back in again with the ink blending tool and you can take the colour out of that like this. You can just knock the colour back so that it's looking a little bit more natural. And then you can curl your bloom back up. Now, as I say, if you want to really take your geranium flower up and hold it there, then you can 
just cross your petals behind each other and put a little dot of glue. But because mine are going onto a card, just bring in the leaves here, um, then I don't want them too pronounced. So that one is going to go there. And as you know, I love working in odd numbers. I very rarely work in even numbers. I don't know why. Maybe it's an OCD thing. But they're going to cluster there. So I'm going to continue gluing flowers exactly the same way as you saw me do that. I'm going to make some kind of card base and then we'll put the card together. So I cleared away some of my mess and this is the card base I decided on. So it's Walmart white card stock behind. Um, it's a sheet of wood plank type paper and then a Jen Hanfield uh, piece of ephemera on the top. And I want that in the center, which means I've now got to build my geranium um, around it. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, as you do, when you start to <laughs> start to make a bouquet, right, so I'm kind of thinking, because geraniums do get clustered together, and wanting it to look like that, so I think that's how I'm going to glue it down, and because of my humidity, I'm going to be cheating, but it's not cheating really, I'm just going to use my glue dots again, so it's going to be just a lot quicker so just wind them on here and I'm gonna go for one there so that's stuck down nice and quick and I'm quite literally only using two glue dots uh, per leaf where I think they're gonna be sort of thing so there's another one and you can still see the sentiment in there and then, I don't know if I'm going to go dead centre with this leaf. Might kind of skew if it a bit. Yeah, why not? I'll be adventurous. And then I'm going to go with my outside flowers first. And get the glue dots off. And I'm going to go, am I going to go there and leave space or am I going to go there? I'm going to go there for that one. Whoops, see humidity. It just peels the back off that cardstock. So I'll just peel that up and do it again. Might be better if I pull one off and stick it down actually. So I'm just going to rearrange my flower and try again. Sort it through. Right, I'm hoping that'll stick there. Pop that through. Puff it up a little bit. Don't want to overdo it because as I say, if, if you're posting it, um, you're going to have to make a box if you uh, put too, too much dimension into something. And now I'm going to hold the back down this time while I put this one on. Put my finger over it. And then so I'm, I'm looking at the camera for where I want to do it. I mean, I don't mind there being spaces like this because it's really nice background paper. And uh, I just think the wood grain is, um, it's a nice touch for when you've got something that's thats quite floriferous and fancy. Now, I could actually pop that one in there, but I don't know. I'm kind of looking on the camera. I think I am going to go in there because that's, that's how geraniums tend to grow. They tend to be um, clustered, so I'm just going to, piece them together and fluff it up and it's showing that it's shiny but of course it's not shiny but sending love and hugs so 
that is my card and of course if you want to put lots and lots more flowers onto it then of course you can you can do anything and these because they're full size you can get um a little pot you know one of those little dollar tree glass like candle jars fill it with some oasis and get your hot glue gun out and you can make yourself a little geranium arrangement and if you did white geraniums and a little bit of glitter make a really nice table decoration for christmas but you can just see all of that gorgeous detail in there and so easy to put that texture using that foam uh, back onto the leaves so I hope you enjoyed that and I'm just going to pause while I get my little haul to show you right so I've got my little haul and my first bit is sequins aren't they pretty they're actually matte sequins, so there's no real shine to them. And the reason that I've got these is, I don't know if you can see the little creases in those. And then these are going to be the centres, and I can just pop them together uh, with a stamen to make little flower embellishments. But I just think they're absolutely gorgeous. Just love the colour. And I think that pink is slightly darker than that one. So, you know, I can just layer them up and make little flower centres. So that's why I got those, and they were all from the same seller. And then I got myself a leaf frame with some leaves, and this is absolutely gorgeous. I've got my, my Rulia, and it's five and a half inches. It's just really, really lovely. So it doesn't cut out the middle. It just puts a stitched edge so that you can put your flowers and your leaves and what have you in there. So I got myself that. And then I've got myself these wood slices, which are huge. And these are going to be great for making Christmas ornaments because you can just cut loads and loads and loads of cardstock and make it really thick and uh, use your distress inks and, you know, put your geranium on there and a uh, little hole and you can hang it as a great Christmas ornament. So I really, really love those. And the biggest size of that is four and three quarter inches and then going across three and three quarter inches so it's going to make gorgeous christmas ornaments and of course you can put a little bit of um, frosty snow on there as well and then my next one is huge mushrooms these are absolutely gorgeous i just love all the holes and the little cutaway parts and things like that and i think if i um measure because I think that layering piece goes onto there and that's the biggest layering piece and that's just under three inches and then this one is the biggest stalk which is three and a half inches so you're probably looking um, at a four or a five inch mushroom once made depending on how far down the stalk you intend to go so I've got myself mushrooms and then I've got myself some gouache and yes that's how you say it and um, these are absolutely gorgeous they're handmade yeah they do look sticky and I have played with them because <laughs> you have to but basically they're just I don't know how you describe them probably the chalk paint of the watercolor world and when you're buying gouache always make sure you look at the colors the paler the color the more expensive it's likely to be because when these dry they dry darker than you see them in the palette so always go for nice pale ones but I bought myself those and even though it looks yucky in there gouache is quite expensive actually but these are handmade so I look forward to using those on some stamped images and then I also got my uh, metallic watercolours and these are absolutely gorgeous these are also handmade they're quarter pans and they are metallics just look at that look at that that's like unicorn they're all sort of like color shifting and I've got this in here and these have got honey in them so that you can like fully load the pigment they're not going to go all crusty and crack on you and um, it's also well honey is a disinfectant it stops them going moldy you still have to leave your lid open and let them dry when you use them but if you live in a humid place like me honey in your stuff is quite good but I get real close up, I wonder, there you go, 
the color shift is just absolutely glorious and you can actually smell the honey in them so I'm really glad that I've got that because that's just going to help as well and I did brush those out on white the most dramatic effect of course would be on black but if I flip that over and hopefully the light is working in my favour see one there is green gold just absolutely gorgeous 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 so I'm looking forward to crafting with those as well really beautiful for stenciling and uh, also for putting a really nice wash down put some um, I don't know what you call it SRAM wrap cling film scrunch it up and put it down and just leave it to dry on your watercolor paper overnight and you get these gorgeous marbleized um, metallic cracks all over your paper which just looks so pretty but I treated myself to that and that is my little haul and this is my project and I hope you enjoyed today now I'm going to be up on Monday, I promise, with those two planner pages, the cats and the star, because I've got all weekend to make them. So you have an absolutely awesome weekend. I know that I'm going to. Anytime I'm crafting is awesome. And as usual, all links below. I'll see you on Monday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.